On August 23, 1912, four-year-old Bobby Dunbar went missing during a trip with his parents to Swayze Lake. Lessie and Percy Dunbar, searched everywhere, to no avail. After an eight-month search, authorities located William Cantwell Walters, who worked as an itinerant handyman, specializing in the tuning and repairing of pianos and organs. Walters had been traveling through Mississippi with a boy who appeared to match the description of Bobby Dunbar. He said that the boy's name was Bruce and mother's Julia Anderson, and that she had willingly granted him custody. Julia Anderson would later confirm this. Nonetheless, Walters was arrested and authorities sent for the Dunbars to come to Mississippi and attempt to identify the boy. There are different newspaper accounts as to the initial reaction between the boy and Leslie Dunbar. One account quote both the Dunbars as initially stating doubts as to the boy's identity. The next day, after bathing the boy, Leslie Dunbar said she positively identified his moles and scars and was then certain that he was her son. The boy returned to Opelousas with the Dunbars to a parade, with much fanfare celebrating the homecoming. Shortly thereafter, Julia Anderson of North Carolina arrived to support Walter's contention that the boy was, in fact, her son, Bruce. According to newspaper accounts, Anderson was presented with five different boys who were of the same approximate age as her son, including the boy who had been claimed by the Dunbars. When the boy in question was presented, he reportedly gave no indication that he recognized her. She asked whether he was the boy recovered, but was not given an answer and finally declared that she was unsure. Upon seeing the boy again the next day, when she was allowed to undress him, she indicated a stronger certainty that the boy was indeed her son Bruce. However, word had already spread about her failure to positively identify him on the first attempt. This, combined with the fact that newspapers questioned her moral character in having had three children, the other two deceased by that point, out of wedlock, led to Anderson's claims being dismissed. With no money to sustain a long court battle, Anderson returned home to North Carolina. She later returned to Louisiana for Walter's kidnapping trial to attest to his innocence and push for the court to determine that the boy was her son. At the trial, she became acquainted with the residents of the town of Poplarville, Mississippi, many of whom had also come to proclaim Walter's innocence. William Walters and the boy had spent quite a bit of time in Poplarville during their travels and the community there had come to know them well, with a number of them asserting that they had seen Walters with the boy prior to the disappearance of Bobby Dunbar. Despite their testimony, the court reached the determination that the boy was in fact Bobby Dunbar. Walters was convicted of kidnapping, while the boy remained in the custody of the Dunbar family and lived out the remainder of his life as Bobby Dunbar. In 1999, Bobby's granddaughter, Margaret Dunbar Cutra, began researching her family's mysterious past, poring over documents in small-town libraries, historical archives, and courthouses. While the AP reported the story, Margaret's father, Bob Dunbar Jr., consented to a DNA test. Dunbar Jr.'s DNA was compared with his cousins, the son of Bobby Dunbar's younger brother. The DNA tests would be able to tell them whether their fathers had truly been brothers, or whether Bobby was actually Bruce. The results were staggering, Bob Dunbar Jr. was not related by blood to any of the Dunbar family. The returned child, all those decades ago, was in fact, Bruce Anderson. The true horror at the heart of this story is twofold, a desperate mother was robbed of her son, while another unknowingly raised a stranger. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to get new stories every week. You can also check out any of our previous stories on the channel. Don't forget to tap the like button. Stay safe.